Chapter Four, Part One. I had thus learned a second fact of great importance. This was that the planet the little prince came from was scarcely any larger than a house. But that did not really surprise me much. I knew very well that in addition to the great planets such as Earth, Jupiter, Mars, Venus. To which we have given names. There are also hundreds of others, some of which are not are so small that one has a hard time seeing them through the telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of these, he does not give it a name, but only a number. He might call it, for example, asteroid three two five. I have serious reason to believe that the planet from which the little prince came is the asteroid known as B612. This asteroid has only once been seen through the telescope. That was by a Turkish astronomer in 1909. On making his discovery. The astronomer had presented it to the International Astronomical Congress in a great demonstration, but it was in Turkish custom, and nobody would believe what he said. Grown-ups are like that. Fortunately, however, for the reputation of asteroid B612, a Turkish dictator made a law. That his subjects, under pain of death, should change to European custom. So in 1920, the astronomer gave his demonstration all over again, dressed with impressive style and elegance. And this time, everybody accepted his report. If I have told you these details about the asteroid. And make a note of its number for you. It is on account of the grown-ups and their ways. When you tell them that you have made a new friend, they never ask you any questions about essential matters. They never say to you, "What does his voice sound like? What games does he love best? Does he collect butterflies?" Instead, they demand, "How old is he? How many?" Brothers, does he have? How much does he weigh? How much money does his father make? Only from these fingers do they think they have learned anything about him. If you were to say to the grown-ups, "I saw a beautiful house made of rosy brick with geraniums in the windows and doves on the roof," they would not be able to get any idea of that house at all. You would have to say to them, "I saw a house that cost twenty thousand dollars." Then they would exclaim, "Oh, what a pretty house that is!" Just so, you may say to them, "The proof that the little prince existed is that he was charming, that he laughed, and that he was looking for a sheep." If anybody wants a sheep, that is proof that he exists. And what good would it do to tell them that? They would shrug their shoulders and treat you like a child. But if you said to them, "The planet he came from is asteroid B612," then they would be convinced and leave you in peace from their questions. They are like that. One must not hold it against them. Children should always show great forbearance towards grown-up people. But certainly, for us who understand life, figures are matter of indifferences. I should have liked to begin this story in the fashion of the fairy tales. I should have liked to say, once upon a time, there was a little prince who lived on a planet that was scarcely any bigger than himself, and who had need of a sheep.